What up, what up, Salvador Braven here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about Kickstarter, Indiegogo, how to smash your goal, how to raise money, right, for your project. And today, we're talking about a little bit of exciting news. And that's the fact that this fantasy author was able to raise more than $19 million on Kickstarter, and actually more than that. So we're gonna get into what does that mean for you? What are some of the data and interesting things behind this that I've actually dug up from the past? And in addition, some advice and tips for people out there that are looking to start new projects, why this is an incredible time to do this. And for those people that are authors and creative types in the audience, some advice and tips exactly for you to get started quickly so you can really capitalize on the opportunity that I'm gonna be illustrating here for you today. And it's coming up right after this. Okay, so let's start with a little bit of the news. I woke up here to a beautiful day in Miami, right? Sunlight streaming in through the winter, and I saw this incredible news announcement for the fact that this fantasy author raised $19 million on Kickstarter in two days to self-publish new novels. So this is Brand Brandon Sanderson, right, who ran a Kickstarter campaign to self-publish four new novels. Uh, in addition, he has done a campaign before. His initial launch was to raise $1 million. He's a sci-fi and fantasy author, and it was actually funded in freaking 35 minutes. Insane, right? Crazy. So this individual is known for creating the Cosmere uh, fictional universe. Uh, it's also in which most of the three novels are set and for helping to finish the final three novels in Robert's Jordan, the Wheel of Time book series. Brian Sanderson asked his folks for $1 million. Like I said, it was funded in 35 minutes. So this is insane. This is incredible. And also, if you want to look at this, um, we're going to talk about this and kind of go through my screen here. But the final thing I want to mention while we're on this news story is just the fact that this is something that's overwhelming for this individual in general, right? And I think it's overwhelming to do any kind of crowdfunding campaign. And all of my students say the exact same thing. So he said, now you've turned it back on me. I started off on doing my best to surprise you. This is incredible, overwhelming, a little bit unbelievable. I went to bed last night hoping people would enjoy my reveal and woke up to a phenomenon, right? A phenomenon. That's the best way to describe what we're currently seeing with this project. So if we go to my screen right now, we can see that actually 21 million has been raised for this project. So to update from the news story, it's actually been a lot more. And in addition, there's 88,000 plus backers right now at the time I am recording this video. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to draw your attention to some of the just simple things as it relates to this project. Then we'll talk about some data and then we'll get into some advice here. So first of all, Let's take a look at this. Number one, if you are a new creator in the audience, you should definitely back this project just for some experience. Watch the video, get an idea of how it is done. If we go to the campaign page here, what you're gonna see on the campaign page to me um, is kind of a little bit more bare bones as compared to other entrepreneurs, other creative types out there, other, other categories out there, particularly the technology category or the board game category. However, a lot of creative categories actually are different than some of these other ones. And that's really the premise of the logistic regression that I did in college, is that not every category is created equal, right? And that's proven to be the case. So if we go down here, we have some kind of some intro information here as it relates to this, and then starts to get more into graphics. So one of the hallmarks that I talk about in the Kickstarter launch formula, which is a book that I wrote available on Audible, available on Amazon, I wrote about this book. I wrote about the fact that you need to have graphics and to show people what it is that they're getting. It is not enough just to tell them. It's not enough just to write it down right in the campaign page. You gotta visually show people almost as though they can put their hands around this and own this thing makes it really exciting. So you can see that here, for example, with uh, the secret project, you can see some of the cover art, cover photos there. You also scroll down, we'll see that this extends into the actual reward tiers. So you can see with those reward tiers, for example, quarterly eBooks, audiobooks, a premium hardcover, you can kind of see those rewards being stacked up, which creates a little bit of excitement as someone is scrolling down the page. Other things you might get would be uh, a year quarterly eight swag boxes, uh, quarterly eBooks and eight swag boxes. As you can see there also the delivery estimated timeline. Uh, you can see as this kind of goes down, more and more stuff, more and more stuff. And it feels like at the end, you're really getting the, the best possible value. You're getting a whole big package of value that's being shipped directly to your door the way that I say. Other things that we're going here, we talk a little bit about shipping, obviously. We get into add-ons, why Kickstarter, new to Kickstarter, et cetera. Uh, and also, if we go here on the right, you can see some of those rewards as well. So this adheres to a lot of the principles that I talk about in the Kickstarter launch formula. It's still hitting those major marks. It's still having the video. It's still having and packaging rewards and upselling rewards, right? And creating those graphical images so that people can actually feel like they can own this thing. It's going to be shipped right to their door. So a lot of the stuff we talk about in the Kickstarter launch formula is being applied 
tied to this campaign. However, I would say that as a newbie, as a new creator, you actually want to overdo it a little bit more. You want to have even better marketing this because this individual not only ran another campaign, but he also obviously has a tribe. He already has a crowd. He already has people that are loving the work that he's putting out. So what are some of the things we can learn from this? Before we get into that, I really just want to go through what I consider to be some of Kickstarter's best work, okay? Now, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with the platform, and it goes through different seasons as well. So when it comes to this, one of my favorite pieces by Kickstarter that they've ever uh, published is called the Blockbuster Effect. So this was actually published in 2012, which is when I got into the industry. And I like filed that away in my memory, and I've always re remembered a lot of the things that I learned from this article. And one of the things from this article, which is a data-based approach to studying projects, is the fact that there's this thing called a blockbuster effect. And it's kind of similar to what I also call the Kickstarter effect, which I'll get into in a little bit. But in order to understand this, we use a project which is called Double Fine Adventure, which is a really big video game project. At the time that this um, was recorded, you can look at my screen here, right? At the time that this was done, this was one of the major projects on Kickstarter, um, more than 3.3 million, which was pledged. So I just highlighted here one of the big takeaways, first of all, which is in the month before Double Fine, before this was launched, the video game category averaged 629 pledges per week. After Double Fine's launch, the video game category averaged 9,755 pledges per week, excluding pledges to Double Fine itself. The jump is similar in terms of dollars. So 1.7 million was pledged to the video game category in Kickstarter's first two years. In the six weeks after Double Fine's launch, it was 2.89 million was pledged and 6.2 counting Double Fine. So if you don't understand what that means, basically what that means is that because of this mega launch, those people went on to fund other projects in that same category, in the video game category. And this is why we call it a blockbuster effect or why I call it the Kickstarter effect, which is the fact that when you create what we design in the Kickstarter launch formula, which is this kind of fury of activity, right? This incredible mania where people want to own these products and they want to buy into this. They want to be a part of the launch. When we do that and when you do it effectively the way that I teach, people are actually going to be more interested in staying in that kind of fun state, emotional state, and actually will go on to back other projects. Or in your case, they'll continue to support you if you open an online store. They'll continue to support you if you run another Kickstarter campaign. They really love being just a part of your journey and being a part of the whole process. So one of the other quick things while I got this data up here, I really want to read this out loud. I want you to pay attention to this. So first of all, combined, Double Fine and Order of the Stick raised more than $4.5 million, and their first-time backers have pledged another uh, 1,083,937 to 1,000 other projects. So Double Fine and the Order of Sticks achievements have inspired tons of press and even other projects. As of today, more than 35 have been launched by first-time backers and four have already been successfully funded. Fellow blockbuster Wasteland 2 launched after being inspired by Double Fine. These projects illustrate how Kickstarter's ecosystem is strengthened with each new project and backer. We'll keep an eye on these trends and share more findings when we have them. Thanks for reading. And I would love Kickstarter to share some more of those findings because now I'm having to do that, right? <laughs> so it'd be great if the platform did that. But for now, I'm putting out you know great data and information for you to, and just bring your awareness to this because I think it's so freaking important. So that being said, what you should take away from this, what should you be thinking, the, the gears should be turning in your head. Okay, this has happened before, time and time and time again, right? And if you got a wave, there's probably gonna be another wave. So if you got a surfboard, you will definitely wanna get out there to be well positioned so that when that wave comes in, right, you're, you're riding that wave and it's amazing. It's a great time, right, and it's, it's so fun. So if that's the case, these projects that are being launched, these mega blockbuster projects, what ends up happening is they bring in a lot of new backers. And those people go on to back other projects in the category in which the project was launched, as well as across Kickstarter's entire ecosystem. So this is a little bit of an insight that I want to share with you right now. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from FulfillRight today. Link in the description. 
How do we know that? Sal, I get that. I, you're reading that article. I don't believe you, right? Listen to what I'm about to say, okay? So let's go here to Surprise, right? Four Secret Novels by Brian Sanderson. Incredible book. You know, it looks really cool. Um, you know, really great project. Well done, et cetera. Let's take a look at the community tab because I am a little bit of a data person. I love me some marketing, right? Let's go here and look at this. Incredible Literally, this project brought in 34,000 plus new backers and the campaign is not even done yet. How cool is that? So that's literally half and half, thereabouts, right? We're kind of rounding it. Half and half, new backers with returning backers. That means 34,000 people are now part of the Kickstarter ecosystem that are going to what? Are going to what? They're going to go and back other projects in the same category and as well across Kickstarter as a whole. So from this takeaway, and I'm showing you even more proof and data, right? What I would take away is that, you know, this is like a no brainer. Number one, if you are a creative type, if you are an author, if you're someone that's going to fall into that category of self-publishing in any way, you should launch your project ASAP. And the reason is you're, you're kind of riding on those coattails, right? You're catching the wave at the crest. If you're sailing, it's like you, you know, are going down the river and the wind is at your back, right? And you have a full, you know, fledged sails and it's so easy. You don't even have to do any work. You just have to kind of spin the, you know, turn the rudder a little bit in order to find out where you're going to go, right? Really easy. So you have the wind at your back. The crest is happening, right? Launch your project or if very least get super prepared and do it in the next couple of months because this is going to spill over. And again, this is what I call the Kickstarter effect, what I teach my students in the Kickstarter launch formula, the book I wrote in order to create with their own projects as well, to create that level of hype and to almost engineer it. Biggest takeaway. The second takeaway, the second thing that you should kind of be aware of here when it comes to this and you and your category is that the number one thing that's holding you back and holding most people back is just understanding how the platform works. And I'm talking about the algorithm. I'm talking about the fact you need a video, you need copy, you need campaign text, right? You need to have the rewards. You need to make sure that you have your shipping down, like all those kinds of things. That's really just what's holding you back. A lot of the times I'm on a coaching call and we're going through a lot of those things and moving people along. And that's one of the things I specialize in is like, how do we get you to take some action? So the easiest thing you can do would just be and go watch some other videos that I got out there on some of those questions, right? But for those of you that kind of want a little bit more of a deep dive, I'm going to be sharing with you a free web class that I'm doing, right? But before we get into that, let's talk just a tiny, tiny bit about some of those tips when it comes to the publishing category. Tip number one, what have we learned from this? What have you seen? What have you learned from this? What we learned is the fact that when someone has sampled your work already, or if you have any kind of followers, it's a no brainer, no brainer to launch a campaign. If you aren't, you're just, you're just saying no to funding. You're saying no to money. Like who, who wants to do that? Right. You're, and you're also saying no to a fun experience. It's not just about funding, right? It's about really having an impact on the world and having people read your book and having people share it with their friends and creating this viral effect. That's what it's about, man. And if you are an author in the audience and you are not currently using crowdfunding, you are just missing out, particularly if you already have an audience. And you even could be thinking about Patreon or subscription-based crowdfunding or whatever it is. Use crowdfunding, incorporate that into your business model. Number two, if you are a beginning author, one of the easiest ways you can begin to build a crowd is to have people sample your work, right? So putting out a free chapter, giving them an idea of what you're making. If it's like a children's book, showing them some of those designs, showing them some of the, the photos, stuff behind it, building up the value building up the anticipation, building up the excitement, right? And that's really what you should take away. And the other thing would be, if you are thinking of going down this path and maybe you're not even in creative category, but you're just doing a Kickstarter campaign in general, you can see how running one campaign can actually lead to a mega second campaign. Because if we take a second here, right? This was a $21 million project. If we go and look at the other projects that this individual has created, they've actually done another Kickstarter campaign, right? Dragon Steel Entertainment. They produced another project. And if this loads for me, right? Well, we'll have this time here. Um, they launched another campaign here. This campaign was also pretty big. You know, they had 29,000 people that were supporting this project. And it will load in just a second. We can see that. This is something that once you get this process down, you can launch again and again and again. And that's why it's so important to invest in learning it. And maybe you don't want to learn it yourself. You know, maybe you'd like to, you know, hire someone to do it. Or you'd like to have a coach to walk you through it or have a guide. Whatever it is, just make the commitment that this is something you're going to handle. Finally got it up here. So this one was 6.7, 6.7 million. And this new one, this one that I just showed you, right? Incredible, massive raise. So many people that are getting involved with this. This is 21. So it's actually more, significantly more. So just because you have one good project, 
mean you can't have a better one in the future. Or if you have a bad project in the first, I've on my podcast, Crowdfunding Demystified, you can hear directly from people that are launching them again and again and again, and then they are successful, right? So the biggest takeaway is make sure to incorporate this into your business. If you are an author, if you're a creative type, if you want to bring something new into the world, a gadget, a gizmo, it does not matter. And a rising tide are going to lift all of the boats. How much would it like suck, honestly, <laughs> if you are a sailor, right? And you go to the dock and you know, you're thinking about taking the boat out and all of a sudden the wind dies and it's like, you already unhitched the boat you, know, you got all those complicated knots off and then you're going to try and go and sail and the wind isn't there. It's like, it's just a waste of time. It's so much easier when the wind is at your back. So that being said, one of the things that I put together is basically a free webinar that's going to share with you how to smash your goal on Kickstarter. How do you get funded? How do you blow past that goal? How do you do super well when it comes to one of these campaigns? What are some of the tricks? Even if you don't necessarily have a big following, I'm going to be sharing with you that on this workshop, this free webinar, this free workshop that I'm going to be delivering straight to you. So I'm going to include the link down below. All you got to do is go to this link I'm about to mention at crowdcrux.com slash masterclass. Again, that link is crowd crux c r o w d c r u x dot com slash masterclass. Just go to that link and you can attend if you'd like this free workshop and make sure to only do it if you're serious. Like you want to take notes, right? You really want to write things down. You want to be aware of how this is working, this process. Last thing I'll mention is that if you do want to reach out to me, you can go to my website, crowdcrux.com. You can go and check that out. I also put out new content there, new podcasts there, et cetera, new articles, new findings just like this, uh, and things that I'm writing, et cetera, coming up with. So you can go there, you can subscribe to my newsletter, or you can reach out to me directly. I have a contact page and and you can reach out to me directly. And that email does go to me. Try to come up with an interesting subject line or something kind of cool because I do get a lot of those emails and I do tend to tune out when they all kind of sound the same. That being said, you can always leave a comment down below. I do check my comments. I'd love to go through them, particularly if they're positive in nature, something that I always resonate with personally. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave a comment if you have a questions. Come subscribe for more content like this and I will see you next time.